So, uh, Minister Bultepsi, I will thank you for the honor of joining us at the Academy for Cultural Diplomacy here in Berlin today. Um, we would like to ask you a series of uh, questions in order to hear your thoughts and opinions on some uh, salient issues. We think it's uh, the proper thing to start with the European Union. What are the current major challenges of the EU? Well, I'm also happy to find you here, to Greek young ladies. Mm -hmm. It was a surprise for me. Uh, what about the um, challenges? Uh, okay, in you, in you, we have only challenges. And I, I believe that the most important challenge in you is that one challenge comes before the previous challenge finished. So, so uh, at the moment we have to face uh, more challenges and uh, there is a bureaucratic way to see things and so everything is so late and I don't know what will be the next challenge that it will be, uh, it will come to continue this serial. Yeah, okay. It's true, actually we haven't finished uh, with the corona yet and we're... Uh, and we had a war. Yeah. And now we oh. have the earthquake. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's also a very it's, big thing. It's yeah. three years being around with problems. Yeah. yeah. I also have a question about the migration. Yeah. So since the 2015 European migrant crisis, the EU is struggling with major migration problems. This problem uh, influences in turn national politics within EU member states that causes political instability and risks for the strength of democracy. So uh, what immediate strategy should EU states apply in order to solve this problem? To solve the problem. Because this is the problem. That's what I said before. Uh, we have a crisis from 2015. That's true. But now uh, we are in 2022. And we have not to three, sorry. Yes, so, so we're already quite there. 10 years. Yeah. And we never solved the problem. Uh, I don't remember how many times we've met on this. European Union leaders have met with this under several governments in several um, European countries. Mm. And we still have not, not only the pact of, of migration, but a, a common way to, 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 to have the returns mm -hmm. for the asylum. Yeah. I mean, a common European way to finish with this, uh, with these problems. And um, still we don't have the solidarity we need. The countries of the South have all the burden and uh, the other countries, okay, uh, they help us. I cannot say they don't help us. They give us money. But this is not solidarity. It's giving money. Uh, so what we need is that the European Union must decide first that we, the, the, we are going to, we must have a common politics on this. Second, mm -hmm. that we need solidarity. And third, to decide that if they have their, some countries have their NGOs, Mm -hmm. with ships, with their flags, they must bring people to their countries also. Yeah. It's irrational to say that you have boats around with NGOs, but okay, everything must go on Greece, Italy and Malta. Okay. So they have to find out, uh, they find out a solution, stable solution for all Europe. So do you think this is uh, practical for the EU? And if not, like what uh, are these factors that cause this inaction? Listen, so uh, okay, uh, the, the, it is difficult for them, but uh, they have to do it. Before that, until they do it, Greece is going to guard its borders because it is a question of national security. We cannot leave our borders open. And uh, first, this is our first protection. Our mm. first task is protection of the borders. And a second task, but it is the s important, the same, is protection of the people. Uh, Greece has proved uh, that can do the two. 
because we, ha we are pioneers on child protection and uh, we are pioneers on humanistic uh, issues mm -hmm. and um, we don't care about the propaganda saying that uh, we don't do we don't protect people our coast guard every night has to protect a lot of people and save a lot of people and me personally i'm in charge of an accompanied children and i have quite 3000 children in more than 72 houses and they, they they live and prosper and they go to the school mm -hmm. and so anything else for me it's pure propaganda okay so <clears throat> moving on to a more recent uh, war a very hot topic the ukrainian russian uh, conflict uh, what is your opinion on the current situation in uh, ukraine how would you describe it well look who had an invasion of russia in a free country and this is the problem i mean uh, it's difficult to, dis to say how this will end, but of course, you cannot send the message that everybody, every revisionistic power in this world can enter another's country with, without, uh, without any reaction. This is impossible. So, um, of course, for us, for Greece, this is very important. Uh, in the area, there are two revisionistic powers, mm -hmm. Russia and Turkey. So they try to do the same things and uh, we cannot accept uh, this. Um, we, cannot, we cannot accept that a power can invade in another's country and then it would be like nothing happened. Yeah, definitely. This is a... I don't know how it <laughs> will end. Yeah. But, but, yeah, do but you... it must end with the win of liberty, of, uh, of democracy. Of, uh, For you personally, what would the, the solution be uh, with the current situation? They ask you to withdraw okay. for, from the Ukrainian mm -hmm. country. Okay. Um, and do you, do you see it in general, um, the current situation in Ukraine, do you see it as a, a general war between the West and Russia. Do you feel like it has gained this kind of character? Uh, propagandistically, perhaps. But I believe that Cold War had finished. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that uh, Mr. Putin decided that uh, he wants something different from what happened after the fall of the wall and after the fall of the Soviet Union. This is the problem because the Cold War had already finished. But one day Putin woke up and said, oh, I don't agree with what happened at that time. I need back my empire. A Cold War finished under some specific uh, conditions the, on uh, Ukraine. Yes. Uh, Listen, Ukraine was part of the uh, Soviet Union. Other, other countries that now they are free, they were part of Soviet Union. You cannot decide something and after 20 years, 30 years, come here and say, no, that was not right. There was an empire and I want it back. No, because now new countries were formed mm -hmm. and you cannot do this. And this is the same for Turkey also. Erdogan says Ottoman Empire. It is finished. Yeah, many years ago. Yeah, many years ago. So, how can you ask something that finished to be reborn again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. And let's take the other uh, actor that is playing in the war of Ukraine and the wars in general that is uh, there happening in Europe. So, about NATO, do you think that the West? Uh, can trust NATO when there is a particular war? Look, NATO is its countries. How can we say that we don't trust NATO? We are part of NATO. We pay for NATO. We are there, Greece, first of all. Even at the times of the memoranda, 
never stop to be member and paying for NATO because it is important for us to be in, uh, in uh, let's say, in this vast uh, neighborhood mm -hmm. of countries. So, yes, we must trust on NATO, of course. But aren't there weaknesses? Of course there are weaknesses and uh, I'm, I'm the last, uh, I mean, uh, even NATO knows what are the weaknesses. We see, we see that uh, uh, all members of NATO do not behave the same way and do not comply the same way. The same way. And uh, yeah. this is something we saw it with Turkey. Where yeah. NATO can never be sure what Turkey will decide. Um, so do you think Turkey will finally ratify the acceptance of Sweden and Finland in NATO? Like That, that was like the... Yes, the this main... is the problem. I cannot tell you. Uh, perhaps they will do it. Things change. You, you know, nothing is uh, the same after the earthquake, for example. But it is crazy that uh, you are in NATO, you decide something with all other members, <coughs> and then one day you, you start blackmailing other mm. countries, threatening other countries, and this is something NATO must see, must look at. So you believe that Turkey is not uh, a reliable like member of NATO? Well, uh, NATO must decide on this. Of course, mm -hmm. if, uh, if you go to, to, to the meetings, the summits of NATO, mm -hmm. and you say one thing, and then you go out and you say another thing, this is a NATO problem. We know, as Greece, we know what to do. And we are always ready, and we don't accept uh, blackmails and, and threats. But this is something NATO has to decide. You know, mm -hmm. it's not easy to, if you are a Greek, it's not easy to answer to questions like this because um, historically we know what happened. We have a lot of differences, but at the same time, we mm. also have a common history. But we have, look, yes, by geography, we must stay there. And our people have, have nothing to share. To, to, they, are, they cannot be divided. And this was, uh, we saw it now at the earthquakes. Uh, you remember, before the earthquakes, um, the motto from uh, uh, Turkish politicians wa was that we are, we are going to come suddenly one night. One night, yes. yeah. And now, after the earthquake, what is the motto in the social media of the Turkish citizens? Uh, they, we threaten them that we are going to go there one night, but Greek it serves people another purpose. came purpose, yeah. yes. suddenly one day, Gre suddenly one day, yeah. one night. Oh, yes, okay. Greek people came suddenly one night to save us. So it was very important for us to the help we have given to the mm. Turkish people. <coughs> we arrived first, and uh, we stayed there until I mean, not me, but Greece was there and stayed there until uh, a lot of people were saved and we sent um, a lot of help and everything mm -hmm. was okay. Okay, so, so okay. moving on to soft power now, mm -hmm. to honor the place we're uh, actually yeah. at the moment. Uh, I would like to ask you, how would you define cultural diplomacy and how important do you think that cultural diplomacy is nowadays? Well, it is, the, it is important. Anything, I mean, any kind of diplomacy is important. When we talk, we avoid a lot of difficult situations. So, cultural diplomacy is important because many, many people come together, exchange their views, and they are coming from different cultural, let's say, sides, uh, yes, and, and they are together and they they prove that they can live together of course it is important that's why i'm here yeah and well, thank you yes. for being here of course uh, but uh what role do you think that cultural diplomacy can play um in the new world order how it's formed uh, today uh, it can play a role you know why because before many years before um these think tanks used to work 
by themselves, with professors, journalists. Mm -hmm. Now they started to talk to politicians also. Okay. So since they talk to politicians and politicians come to this fora and talk to them, then um, ideas are mixed. Exchange, I mean, yeah, there's yes. a better exchange after, of ideas. After you finish with a session like this, when you go back, you are a little bit different. A little bit, of course, you are not different. At yeah, all. maybe you have a few But ideas. some ideas, yes, have, have come and uh, uh, perhaps in your next move you, you will use even one of these ideas. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it is important. Yeah, I, I agree. Thank you for this answer. And moving on to the last question, which concerns us a lot. Um, what is your message for the future generation of young leaders? Of young leaders. Well, what I think, what I would tell them is, first, study a lot. Oh, yeah. Second, work before you become a leader. Work? Like, yes. uh, according to your experience, like, yes. uh, how you... many years do we need to, like, if, if we want to become a politician or... I believe that uh, if you have not, uh, you know, worked for, let's say, 10 years, I cannot give you a number. But you cannot tell me that we, just with the studies, I yeah. go and decide for the other people. No, you have to go and see how life is. You have yeah. to work. You have to earn your life. It, it's uh, like politics, a, it's not yeah. earning the life. Yeah. It's, it's a hobby, like hobby. journalism. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's something you like. If you don't like it, it's not a profession. You have okay. to have your own profession. You have to end your life by this and then try to help your country and people by beca by becoming leader or a politician. So you think like uh, becoming a leader or a politician is mostly an art, not a profession? It must be an art, yeah. It must okay. be an art, yes. Okay. Art of thinking, art of working, conclusion. art of collaborating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. It was, it was an, an honor. honor. Thank, you. Here. thank you. I'm happy to. <laughs>